live, I see that store of us, or news.therawfoodworld.com backslash live. Ask your questions. Um, so just so everybody knows, our June raw food retreat here in Vilcabamba, Ecuador, we have 22 people signed up so far. This is the one where we do, where we do plant medicine, San Pedro. Um, it's gonna be a very powerful, potent um, retreat adventure. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna sell out, but we're, we're about two thirds full. So if you wanna join that, go for it. What's up, Lynn Rose? Yeah, I'm in Ecuador. Vilcabamba, the land of longevity, really clean air, really clean water. Really high energy. Yeah. So ask your questions. So the June retreat is almost sold out. There's like two, it's two thirds filled. It's not almost sold out. It'll probably won't fill up until the very like last minute, like it usually does. How much organosilica do you take each day to grow your hair? You and your wife work stuff out or what? Okay, so we'll start with the organosilica question. Um the organosilica, um, I take it, I actually just started taking it again. I, I, I personally, I go through a bundle of weeks sometimes. Like I'm, I'm just, I haven't taken it so long, so I'm going like hardcore right now. Um, but when I originally took it and my hair grew like crazy, it wasn't, okay, so organosilica is the most absorbable silica on the planet. Clinical study shows it's 64 times more bioavailable than colloidal silica. It has a 70% assimilation rate, which is absolutely crazy. And in today's day and age, where the RDA has um, no requirements on minerals such as silica, and with everybody with leaky gut and like in um, bad the bacteria gone, SIBO, um, you need that to be able to um, liquefy and break down the silica to where it needs to go. So this this. Organosilica that we have is extremely bioavailable. Let me get it for you. Hmm. And most people are not getting enough silica in their diets. Um, and so what happens is we require a daily, a high daily amount of silica every single day. And if we don't get what we need, then it goes to the vital components of our bodies. For example, it goes to our brain, our immune system, and our heart versus building collagen, growing hair, fixing skin, nails, and stuff like that. So when, when you take organosilica, this is the most absorbable silica on the planet. If you have um, SIBO issues or anything like that, this is still going to absorb. Um, clinical studies show that it's actually boosted collagen levels 19% in people. Um, we have this available right now at the rawfoodworld.com and just type in organo, you'll see it at a very low price, um, even lower than Amazon. When I'm, there's a map, but we're, we've been get, we're not supposed to be doing that. But anyway, so go to therawfoodworld.com if you're interested in getting this. Um, this is one of the rare products that I take frequently. There's only a handful that I take on an ongoing basis. I'm taking the G5, so they had more silica in it. G5 is, organo G5, Siloplan is another one we carry from the same company. I just like this one for some reason, even though the G5 has double the amount of silica, that comes from horsetail, this comes from crystal quartz. They're both good, they're both really good. Okay, so now we got questions. Oh yeah, so you and your wife work stuff out or what? We worked stuff out a long time ago, we're just divorced, we're not, we're friends. So we've worked it out in a level where everybody's happy, everybody's peaceful, our kids are smiling all the time. Um, I see Angela every day when I pick up the kids. We're friends, no hard feelings. We use no lawyers. We just did it out of love and especially for the children and stuff like that. We've been divorced for one to two years now. Um, yeah, everybody's happy. I mean, if you watch my Instagram, you see my children, they're extremely happy. I have them every single day over here. Yeah, so watch our Instagram live. If you've been missing our Instagram live, what I've been doing, or not live, just Instagram posts, is I take all the posts and I edit, I, well, I do edit a little bit, but I throw them on YouTube for the entire day because I post on Instagram all day long and then I transfer it to YouTube so you can actually go see all the previous posts that we did. Um, yes, some of it is edited. If you want the raw, unedited version, and follow us on Instagram. 
um, the raw food world. And um, then the things that I regret you know, doing later, we'll, you'll actually get to see. Okay. Glowing raw, what is up? Okay. Oh no, it's okay. Congratulations on the conscious uncoupling, thank you. Is where I found you, Matt, was Raffle World on YouTube. Cool. Okay, so here we go, back to um, Facebook questions. Oh yeah, Lynn Rose is, you're coming, yeah, 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 yeah. You're coming to June, right? Yeah, she's coming to June retreat, she's excited, I'm excited. Okay, I wish I could stay awake for this, but it's 2 a.m., I have to sleep, I'll watch it tomorrow. Have a great broadcast, thank you. I'm starting my raw food life plan tomorrow. Awesome. Um, again, you don't need to be 100% raw to be healthy. This detox thing is no joke. It's very, can be very difficult. Like, um, for example, you have lots of gas that you're not used to, lots of low energy at some points. That's why it's difficult for people to eliminate coffee. And not only that, you have the addiction. When you eliminate coffee, you get the, the shakes, you get the coffee breath, you get the coffee headache. And all you want is that fix to stop the detox, which is withdrawals. You just want to take that coffee and stop the withdrawals. And it feels so good when you do that. So when you go 100% raw, um, Kimberly, if you think the coffee drinker has it bad, you're, that they're just eliminating one ingredient from their intake. You're eliminating refined sugar, which in studies has been shown to be as addictive to co as cocaine on the brain, um, processed starches, uh, trans fatty acids, and even all the cooked foods. Um, so the coffee drinker has an easy walk in the park. So what I like to recommend, if you can do it, that's awesome. Go 100% raw, that's great. But I usually generally recommend most people go um, on a cooked whole foods diet. It's much easier because you go through less withdrawals. What's up, Diana? Matt, I like the organic silica one too. I take it daily. It has really helped me with healing a bad sprain. I'm able to walk again. It's huge. It's helping other issues too. Great healing was occurred. Thank you for the work. That's awesome. Um, so silica is one of my favorite number one. Okay, let me show you my two favorite beauty products. I actually am doing a test about getting rid of wrinkles. I think it's working. It has, no, it has nothing to do with like these products, this test. But let me do it for a month and we'll see what happens. Anyway, <clears throat> this is all the minerals the body needs. There's no RDA on any minerals. The soils in the USA are depleted um, of this, this mineral goodness. So these are the two top beauty products that I like to take is the Ketone Hypertonic. Um, what it, you get is 30 vials. You can take one a day if you want. You get this little plastic piece with all these vials in here. And you, it's, it's ocean water filtered through phytoplankton. Um, anyway, you just, you take off one side and then you put it over your mouth and go. This has all the minerals the human body needs. Um, even my daughter was e drinking this on Instagram. So minerals are critical to activate enzymes, which produces protein, collagen, and things like this. So if you're lacking, and silica is like the number one mineral needed for this type of hair, skin, and nail thing. So pretty much these two products alone right here are going to boost your collagen levels. Also, when you take this product, it's not just about the beauty. Silica is, as I said before, if you're not getting enough, it goes to the vital organs of the body, the immune system, the brain, the heart. If you're not getting enough, then it's going to go to those areas, and then you're going to be lacking in boosting collagen, hair, skin, and nails, and stuff like that. But this is also does other things. It's been shown in clinical studies to remove heavy metals from the brain and the human body. Um, in a clinical study, when humans take this, they, they pee out all this aluminum. And on animals, what they did was they fed dogs a high aluminum diet, low calcium, low silica, and they all this aluminum, aluminum built up in their brain. 
And as soon as they added more silica, they left the calcium low, they, um, they kept the aluminum high, and then they added silica, high silica, the aluminum didn't, there was no aluminum in the brain. So this alone helps remove heavy metals. Many people think calcium is the most critical mineral for bone growth, but in actuality, silica is more important. When someone has osteosarcoma and other osteo issues, what happens is silica goes down 50% in clinical studies and calcium goes down six to 8%. Also, this is, what, the reason why is this is really critical for the formation of the bone matrix um, in our bones and our teeth and stuff like this. The bone matrix is collagen fibers, which silica is critical for building, and then calcium salts are deposited in there, make the, the hardness, while the, the silica is more of like the flexibility aspect. This is also really good for the heart, the aorta, people with strokes, have um, like 50% less silica in their in their aorta, stuff like that. So it does a lot of good things, not just about the beauty. So it's just critical to get silica every single day. This is available at therawfoodworld.com, even at a lesser price than Amazon. We appreciate the support, therawfoodworld.com. Use the coupon code rawfood7 for 7% off. Just type, on, type in Organo, O-R-G-O-N-O -O on our website. Okay. So here we come. Let's see here. Um, I don't know, Nicola. Okay, do you think yerba mate is a, a good alternative to coffee? Yeah, it's like less um, caffeine. It's like a weaning off type thing. Hi, Matt. When will the Europe store be fully stocked? We are deprived. I don't know how long we're going to stick with that. I'm kind of like pulling out maybe, possibly. Whereas, I don't know. Um, my, t my top five supplements that I take daily would be, um, these two right here. I like the Rishi Spore oil. If I'm feeling I need an immune system boost, I do the Rishi Spore triterpene capsules. Um, let's see if anybody is over here. What else do I like to take? B12 patches, which I haven't done in a while. Let's see if I have them here. Oh no, I'm dying! Oh, I take my I take our herbs every day. I, I took a bunch of our Ayurvedic herbs from our website and I put them in a bottle and I shook them up and I, I take that every day. Yeah, all sorts of different things. Okay. So here we go. My hair is growing faster and thicker than usually. I'm really happy with it. Oh, I don't have joint pain anymore. Also in clinical studies, the silica has been shown to help with arthritis and joint pain. Okay. Buffy Dog is talking about her Vitamix. She loves it like crazy. Does Ormus have silica? Good question. It's probably not as bioavailable as this. They, they seriously like, there's a polymerization that occurs in like, like plant silica products have also been shown to be like um, have less silica than like absorption than this. Um, also, you have to be careful of horsetail um, because of thiaminase. Taking that on an ongoing basis can actually um, mess with your kidneys. On the G5 psyllid plant, they actually took that out in the lab. But in the lab, they stop this polymerization process to where it becomes so bioavailable. That's why it's 64 times more bioavailable than colloidal silica. Will it remove mercury? I've never seen a clinical study that does that on this, but you never know. What's up, Deborah from North Carolina? Yes, Lynn Rose. I will see you in June at our raw food retreat. Okay, so here we go. We're on Facebook looking at all the questions now. What can women do for wrinkles instead of Botox? <laughs> okay. I am against fillers. I am against Botox. I'm even against microneedling. Long-term effects, I personally feel, are not going to be good. Um, and it's just like mental mayhem. Number one, um, the doctors have you in their grips for the rest of their lives with money. Oh, it's starting to sag. Oh, this is the result of that. Oh, I need another fill. It's like this, it's like this insipid like disease. It's almost like a parasite when you start doing like that type of stuff. And once you start to get out is like, oh, my face is, I want my normal face back. It's like this rancid, like, like, just don't do it. That's freedom. Freedom is to just like pull out of that for people that do that. Um, 
but Botox has been shown over time to cause sagging and stuff like that in the long run. Um, I've been messing around with something that seems to be working. See, what? there's this like crazy rancid energy when it comes to beauty and trying to fix your face and stuff like that. There's there. Okay. So microneedling is a way to kind of like make your heel repair, your face heal and repair. One benefit that men have is they shave their face and then like it repairs. Um, so one concept like face masks, you like, it's a pretty hardcore thing. And then you put, it's, it's all kind of like repair. Um, so what I've, this rancid energy that people go through. Okay. So I bought this thing called a Clarisonic. It's more of like a female thing, but whatever. you like put it on your face and it goes, zzz, and it kind of like takes a layer off, I guess you could say, as it cleans your face, you, you do it with some sort of like face wash. And um, I actually did this on one of my Instagrams lately, and I was like, oh man, it's like my face was all red and stuff. But what happens is it's pretty hardcore. And then you, 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 I use some living libations, the Maverick face cream with a bunch of the serums that I put in. So I'm giving you my, what I've been doing. It's been doing something with the wrinkles. And, um, but it's like a hardcore thing for me. I've never done anything like this before in my life. And the first time I used this Clarisonic, I couldn't feel it and I was doing it. I did it for way too long. And my face was like, ah! So anyway, what I do is, so what, mo what, what, I, what a lot of women do is they'll take this Clarisonic or wash their face in the morning and in the evening. I do it once every two weeks. That's it. Anything more I think is too much. So what I do is I do it and I do the living libations for like a few days and then I stop that even. And then I wait two weeks for complete healing and then I do it again. And I do it especially right around here where the wrinkles are and up here. And it's kind of like almost like the, I've only done this for like two times, but it seems like something's happening. It, it's, it's pretty cool. But with that rancid energy, like, oh my goodness, my face, my beauty. Like women are like washing their face two times a day, putting creams on nonstop, using this thing. It's insane. And that's probably long-term not good for you either. Once every two weeks. Anyway, so um, okay. So um, someone writes, Matt. My line of work demands I'm working with toxic chemicals all day. I love my work. I'm a visual artist, but over 20 years with turpentine, etc., are getting to me. Any suggestions for damage control? Okay, so that's like nail polish remover. It sounds like she works in a salon. Um, yeah, that's pretty hardcore. Um, I'll have to do some research, but there, the number one thing you could do is try to get them to switch from like to a turpentine free. <laughs> that would be good. Um, but yes, I hear you. Um, if you've been doing it for 20 years already, your, your body has probably built up a tolerance to it. If you were to stop, you'd probably go through a, a big withdrawal, detox. Um, so the good news is you've built up a tolerance. For example, like if a person were to take a tablespoon of arsenic right now, we would just die. It's too toxic. But if we were to, don't do this at home, but if you were to take one drop like every third day and then built up and built up and built up, maybe over a year or three, you can take that tablespoon of arsenic without any issue. It's kind of like what snake hunters do in order to um, succeed is what they'll do is they'll introduce, if someone to get bitten by a, a venomous snake, they'll die. But they added one drop of venom to their bloodstream and then every three days or whatever they do, and they build up, build up to where they can handle a snake bite and they won't die. I mean, it's probably not the healthiest thing for the body in the long run, but your body is very proactive and durable and you know, it's not ideal, but we're all exposed to things like this. I mean, I wouldn't like kill yourself over it. Thank you. We've been, I've been doing all these Instagram stories every single day. Follow me on Instagram. I, if you've missed any of my Instagram stories, because it only lasts for 24 hours, I download them and throw them on YouTube, but I edit it, edit 
out all the stuff that I regretted doing publicly. So if you want like the unedited versions with things where I regret doing, you'd want to follow me on Instagram. That's like all raw, unedited. I do posts all day long. They can only be 15 seconds each, each post. Um, go check it out. Instagram. We're at 8,000 followers on Instagram. Okay. Just coming back. Okay, so here we go. What if I have a brain tumor that's destroyed my pituitary gland? Is there any supplements that I should take? The main thing is just to eat healthily and be positive and don't like, okay, so Tony Robbins, he actually had a tumor on his pituitary gland and um, in his early 20s and they told him, that's why he has, he was, his, he's so tall and has like a uh, large hands. And they said to him, you know what, like, it's not looking good. You're probably going to die. We have to do surgery. And he, what, did, what did he do? He said, no, I don't accept that. He got like a hundred different doctors' opinions. To this day, he still has that brain tumor. Does this look like a man who has any issues or is worried about taking supplements or is dying of cancer? Supposedly he has cancer and his brain tumor is still in his brain. No, this is like the attitude we need to take in terms of any illness that someone throws upon you. It's the placebo effect working against you. The placebo effect is a very powerful tool. A, people have healed from cancer based off belief from taking a, a, a sugar pill, thinking that it's gonna heal them. Like 70% of the people healed from cancer based off of belief. And many people have healed from, like there was this one guy who was a knee, top knee surgeon. He did a placebo test where he just slit their knee and then sewed it back up without doing any surgery work. 80% of the people's knees healed. He actually had to quit his profession because it had the same success rate as doing the actual knee surgery. So the placebo effect is very powerful and potent, the, the, but there's a very dangerous aspect about it is that the, the placebo effect can also work against us. And this is where the danger of the doctors and the hospitals come into play. Um, because if you go to the hospital and they tell you that you have five years to live, that placebo is gonna actually make you believe that. If they tell you you have a thyroid issue and you gotta remove your thyroid, you're gonna believe that. The thi thyroid numbers change throughout the entire day, they fluctuate. Seasons it fluctuates. If you're about to put a needle in your arm getting blood tests, knowing that you're about to get your blood tested, thinking something's wrong with you, your cortisol levels are gonna shoot up, your blood tests are gonna be totally inaccurate, and based off of black ink on a piece of paper, you now have this belief that you have a thyroid disorder. That's why I'm overweight. You're looking for an excuse to be overweight. No, I am. the attitude is I am healthy. Most people who have brain tumors or any kind of tumor in the body, probably in, in Ecuador, don't even know they have tumors. It's like we go get examined. It's like normal. The human body is a cleansing machine. It like takes waste. It does what it needs to do in order to heal it. Tumors are formed in the process sometimes. Like all of these different things happen. There have been people on their cancer beds, de deathbeds, who did chemo. One of person watching this, her husband's uncle or grandpa, I forgot who it was. He's like, I wish I would have just died in my own home the amount of suffering that he went through in the hospital. And maybe he, if he would have ever known he had cancer, he wouldn't even had any issue because there wouldn't have been any belief and he could have lived out the rest of his life. So this whole entire like attitude is illness. No, I am healthy. I am, nothing is going to stop me. Nothing's gonna take me down. Maybe I have to make a spiritual tweak here or a physical tweak here with my diet. Whatever you gotta do, you gotta do, but it's like your desire to live. If you have an illness, your desire to live is like, you gotta like, this is, there's a change that needs to happen there. Anyways. What if I have a brain tumor that destroyed my pituitary gland? What if, what if, what if, what if? What if I, I have this cyst on the top of my back here, like right here, what if that is like this or that or that? No, I don't even give a shit, excuse me. Coffee is said to have so many antioxidants in it, but it's off limits for raw vegans, right? No. I mean, it's not raw. These are like rules, 100% raw vegan. Okay, so 
I've been raw, 100% raw for 20 years. I, in my entire life, I've drinking coffee two times, maybe three times. Before I went raw, I did it two times. And one time when I was raw, I did it once. It was like a drug. I'm extremely sensitive, guys. I didn't do a lot, just like a few sips. The focus I had was insane, insane. But then the aftermath, the, the nasty gas that you would not want to be around was horrible. But it was just like an experiment to see what would happen. <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. So people are loving the rivers. I do it like every day, so I think people will get bored. The trout farm was today. It was pretty cool. Okay, here we go. What's up? Okay. Um, what if the sky falls down? What can we do about fear? Okay, what about tea? Yeah, tea is okay on a raw food diet. It's more about what is damaging to the human body than like, following rules and regulations to where you're in a title called raw vegan. So if tea is not allowed on a raw vegan diet, then I guess I have not been 100% raw for 20 years. I don't do tea often. I prefer my cucumber juice and things like that. But on occasion, people give me tea. You're pretty much just taking the essence out of plants and drinking it. There's nothing wrong with that. Coconut chips that are raw and dehydrated are going to have a higher impact on the human body than medicinal teas that you drink. I eat gelatinized maca, which is done through a pressurized system. It's very gentle on the body. It takes out all the starch, all those enzymes that can cause issues if you do maca for too long. It's easier on the body than raw maca. It's easier on the body than um, coconut chips. Gelatinized maca, it's not raw. So I guess I would not be 100% raw for 20 years, but this is less damaging than other raw food. It's more about what's damaging to the human body. It's not like these – the. Okay. What can we do about fear-based thinking? Look, I'm not like a, I'm not a spiritual guru here. I've got my own spiritual issues that you wouldn't believe. I've been this, on this raw vegan path for 20 years. I've got all these OCD issues. If a person offers me food and I haven't digested my food beforehand, I start to like, I, I start to go in fear and forget, okay, what do I do? I don't want to upset them or sometimes I'm like, I get into my ego, I'm real spiritual, I can do this, I can handle this, I can eat a bite of something after a meal that has not digested. So I take a piece of their raw pizza, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I got this. And all of a sudden I start to sweat, my breathing comes, like I have all these OCD issues. So you're, you wanna ask me what to do about fear-based thinking? I don't know, go walk out, do things that are feel, fearful to you. What I used to do is I would do talks, non-stop talking in front of people and i would like thrive in that fear i would just do it and then like once it was actually there everything was fine but um you know everything is just like it's almost like when you get to this point of you improve your diet you go through withdrawals and detox and you can't control yourself and you just like you, you eat there's you got you got to kind of like you know it's it's kind of just like you have to like face it <clears throat> all right let's move on i am not spiritual okay i like that i like you, I find that I eat the same foods every day. It's mostly raw, all whole, very simple food, but I still suffer digestive issues. After some research, I found eating a much wider variety of food every day is said to be much better for the gut and overall health by getting far more good bacteria and prebiotics in doing so. What do you think? Thank you so much. Yeah, of, of course it's probably a good thing. Um, when a person eats a hamburger from McDonald's, Different bacteria are produced versus when you eat a salad. Some of them are more beneficial than others. I've been doing this raw food diet for 20 years now. There's not that many different things that I can actually eat. Um, but you have inspired me you know, to eat olives, 
different kinds of nut butters, but all nut butters are kind of the same. Like, like, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Rosie loves my hair. I have one, but don't think it's not rough. Okay, two questions. What's going on? Okay. When's talking about the Clarisonic. Does the silica cause upset stomach like zinc can? This is very gentle on the human body. Very gentle. I actually, <laughs> for testing purposes, I drank a half a bottle at one time just to see what would happen. Okay. I've gone a little crazy on juicing carrots lately. I know it's high in sugar. It's not that high in sugar, but it's a reasonable amount to consume per week. It depends where you're at. In my earlier stages of being raw, I did crazy amounts of, of carrot juice. Now I do very little. Um, it's really good for cleansing the liver. Many people, when they drink carrot juice, they, their skin turns orange and they think it's from the carrot, but what's really happening, it's breaking down like coagulated bile and other toxins in the liver, and it's happening at such a rapid pace that it all doesn't excrete from the urine, and it actually comes through our skin. But if you keep at it, if you're eating a healthy diet and you're not adding more toxins in, then after about three to five months, uh, or two to five months, depending on how old you are and stuff like that, the skin goes back to normal. That's what happened to me. Eva is back. Okay. Okay. Elizabeth writes, I love what you're saying right now, not because of physical things so much. I've been so triggered by people all around me telling me no, telling me I can't. I, I can't stand that. And the reason is triggers me so much is that I know it's a lie because I'm soul and infinite potential. And for it to be all around me, programming my brain, I can feel the contrast. It's been doing my head in. I so appreciate what you're saying. To know what is versus what is told to us. Thanks. Finally, for the reminder, thanks. Final, finally, for the reminder outside of myself. Ha ha ha. Look, I, I'm like a rebel. I am. I go against the, the norm. Um, when I went to New York City, everyone was telling me I can't afford it. Um, it's dangerous. When I first, before I went raw, that's when I discovered raw. Meanwhile, I subletted a penthouse from someone who worked at MTV Networks because I worked there. Three different ones, was rocking the house like crazy. This whole entire, like, it's ugly. It's ugly when people, it's people trying to keep you down. And then if you go raw, you think like keeping you down and all these other lies, like that's gonna be like a major attack point going 100% raw or even eating healthily. Even vegetarians or any but vegans have an issue socially. Like I'm attacked all the time on YouTube, the comments like, oh, you look so old, you need to add this to your diet. They're, everyone's coming up. It's, it's almost like once you become strong and you've been doing this for a long time, everything just bounces off and like goes smacks them right back in the face. All these people, it's just like bump. It like doesn't affect you anymore. So it's like you just have to like, process that when it happens like to where you, you just have to it's like you just experience it over and over and over again to where it just it dissipates to <clears throat> what do you think about drinking baking soda and water uh never heard of that okay ever writes hi matt might have an opportunity to move to hawaii but have been advised to stay away due to fukushima effect What's your take? Have researched a little, and it does sound a bit concerning. Thanks, Matt. Just because that doubt's there, I wouldn't go. Thank you for saying that. I look great. I appreciate it. One thing that that happened is I haven't posted videos on YouTube in like 10 years. And so what happens is um, I started posting recently, and so I've aged 10 years, and people are like, what? And so that happens. Um, even though they still are a little like, hey, this is a human being here. Um, but anyway, we age. That's what happens. 
I, I leave California for seven years and I go back to the farmer's market. I see all the old fa other farmers. They've aged a little bit. It's normal. We all age and we shouldn't fear aging. My 17 year old calls you the high guy. She loves your hair. Thank you. The hair guy. Okay. What are your thoughts on food combinations as in acid fruits versus fats and such? That's another whole belief thing. Um, people go on this raw food diet or they are in this raw food realm and they eat like crap. And then they worry about things like combining um, fruit with almond butter or sprouting their almonds. Meanwhile, they're eating refined sugars and processed starches, which are the most damaging foods to the human body. They keep like for the rest of their lives, mix fruit with fat and eat all the unsprouted almonds they want, and they will be doing a hundred times better than they're doing now if they were to replace the refined sugar. This is all just like, it's like these, these raw food pioneers back in the day come in with like these OCD issues like I have, and they implant it on everybody to where it becomes like this like physical thing. You can't mix fruit. I eat fruit with, I eat strawberries with almond butter every single day. So do my daughters. And then you believe it and you get gas and all these other things. You're going to get gas regardless. Gas is unavoidable. We all fart. You can't avoid it. You can eat the same thing every day like I do. And depending on things, emotional things that you're going through, spiritual things that you're going through, will change the consistency, the 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 smell, all of these different things, and it has nothing to do with your diet. Cortisol levels go up, insulin, all sorts of different things. So you can play this gas game like I did for 10 years and try to figure it out, but in the end, you finally realize that um, a lot of it is BS. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so that's Instagram. Coming back to Facebook. Okay, so um, about Hawaii, Eva. Uh, me, personally, I wouldn't go. Because mentally, I probably couldn't handle it. Because I have that belief also. But I wouldn't mind going for a little bit. <clears throat> it's almost like this. It's like this whole belief thing is a big thing. Your poop reflects the poop you're in. Okay. Hi, Matt. Could you talk about detoxing from vaccinations? I know silica is one to rid of heavy metals, but perhaps there is something else you could comment on. Thank you. Okay. So when I was younger, I was vaccinated. And me personally, I never worry about it ever. I don't think I need to detox from anything. I think I'm healthy. I don't buy bullshit from natural health doctors telling me I need to do this, this, and this because I was vaccinated 20 years ago or 40 years ago. Shit. Excuse my language again. Why are we so scared about like detoxing metals all the time? Did someone tell you, like, like, is something wrong with you? And then you went to a natural doctor. Oh, here, give me your money. Take these supplements. And uh, you need to detox from this. Fear, 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 fear. Your body detoxes. Your body is a detoxing machine. It detoxes whether you want to or not. So the way detox works is like this. It's like going through withdrawals. You take vaccine, you take coffee, you eliminate coffee, then you go through detox, you go through withdrawals. Detox is just a fancy name for going through withdrawals. You're in working in the nail industry, beauty industry, like this woman for 20 years, breathing in turpentine, how can she detox it? Get out of the turpentine and then you go through with the withdrawals. And then people are gonna scare you saying, oh, but it gets stuck in your brain tissues and all these different things and are you feeling good? Did they just like, are you going to someone to say, hey, the, first off, the human body is, a, is, a, is, a, is like a rebuilding, repairing thing. It needs sleep. It needs rest. 
it goes up and down. Sometimes I feel really good, I'm like clean, and then sometimes I'm stressed and I don't get enough sleep and I have all this nasty gas and I'm down. When I'm down, I don't go to a doctor saying something's wrong with me, please help me, or if I'm overweight, or if something's like, I don't do that. Then you're just like opening yourself up. Oh, this might be because you've got back, you've got metals in your brain from vaccines. You gotta take this product, you gotta detox that. Please help me help. I'm trying to free you from this madness. <laughs> Poof, gone. That's all you have to do. Anyway. So if someone's gonna tell me like, I had vaccinations when I was young. I probably had everything across the board. If, if I'm not feeling like, if I go to a natural doctor, oh, I think I'm doing something good because I'm going to a natural doctor now. Oh, you need to do all of this crap because you had vaccines and this is why you're not feeling good. No, I don't let anybody tell me why I'm not feeling good. No one will know better than I do. Go to the regular doctor, you wanna get blood tests and freak out and all of a sudden your cortisol levels as they're like, you think something's wrong with you, number one, so your cortisol levels are up. Now they're about to stick a needle in and take your freaking blood out. And that's gonna freak the crap out of you. You're gonna be freaked out like crazy. Your blood levels are already screwed up now because of all this freaked outness. Even just being in the hospital, you're freaked out. And now you, you're you like submitting yourself. Okay, enough ranting that. Um, so being healthy is a mind state and the, and you know, the best thing that we can do to feel better is to eat healthily. That's simple. Okay. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Someone says I look better now. I'm not worried about it. Look, when I'm 90 and all these people are dead, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm good. I seriously think I feel good. I feel like I look really, really. Yeah, you look really good. I think I look really good. And um, yeah, just watch. Time will show. I'm only 22 and my problem is I'm already showing signs of receding hairline. It scares me a lot, so I'm researching everything I can do to reverse it. It's cool. She's doing it, she's doing the research herself. Me too, I've got this receding hairline too that I feel like I have. I research the stuff myself, I take some supplements. I'm placeboing myself into having crazy long hair. By taking these supplements, I'll probably do nothing. I'm so funny. Okay. Hi, Matt. Will you be doing an update video on your gardens anytime soon? What's up, Jennifer Bliss? That's a really good idea. I haven't even thought of doing that. People like, like that stuff. Do you ever watch movies? Um, I do a lot of work, so I, I tend to like stay off the TV a lot, but um, I have been watching TV series lately. I try to just do... So, like, um, I take one day a week off from work. Sometimes, like, uh, if I have nothing to do, I'll watch uh, many episodes at one time. Okay. Okay, tell us more about why you take long breaks from supplements such as silica and key central mineral supplements. <laughs> Gavin, didn't we just, we, didn't we talk about this um, on personal text the other day? <clears throat> Haha, you were crapping me up. Keeping it, keep keeping it real. Of course. It pisses me off, dude. Where are we at? 843. Okay. I'd go to Hawaii. Hook me up. I'll live there. <laughs> the radiation is probably less talking than people I've been living around. Haha, <laughs> seriously. I'll choose Hawaii every time. Surf, fine, have live life. Yeah. You'll die anyway, so make sure you're doing, okay. Meat's good for the soul. I'm not gonna deny that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's good either because we got vegans here. I don't eat meat. I'm 100% raw vegan. I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, I'm just a big fan of a cooked whole foods diet. And um, when I recommend people to like, do, like if a person wants to go 100% raw, um, I like to recommend foods 
that are actually um, animal products that don't hurt harm animals, such as eggs, goat cheese, things like that. Um, but if you take a look at the human body and you were to digest animal products, it breaks down, it's protein. It breaks down into amino acids, which rebuilds the human body. Fat, like eggs or you know cheese, in the digestive system, fat breaks down to fatty acids. It rebuilds the brain, the cellular structure. Now, if you look at things like quinoa, baked potato, these are all good starches that are healthy for the human body. Brown rice, this breaks down into glucose and fiber. Now, glucose and fiber doesn't rebuild the human body. It has vitamins and minerals on something, but it doesn't really do much. So what I like to recommend is people doing a high raw diet with animal products, such as eggs, which are extremely healthy to the human body. My daughters, I'm 100% raw vegan, but my daughters are growing girls. They're 100% raw and they eat eggs. And the way I would go from moving backwards is from a raw food diet would be eggs, goat's cheese, fish, chicken, turkey, and then you go to quinoa, millet, buckwheat. You don't want to overdo these animal products because people have an issue with that too, just small amounts. But if you can't handle it emotionally and spiritually because of the empty stomach feeling, then these starches are the healthy starches are good for you because they satiate you. Now we can eat the quinoa, millet, buckwheat because that's going to satiate you to where you can actually go without going through withdrawals and detox as much if you were to do what I'm talking about. But you don't want to overdo these animal products either because that will mess you up. <clears throat> Crystal block this a uh, court jockey guy. He called me an idiot. Do you cook the eggs for the girls? Yes. Okay. What kind of music do people listen to in Ecuador? Um, a lot of Spanish music, I guess. Like, or like, you know, like some of it's cool. There was this, watch my first Instagram one. I went to this like into town where it was called Carnival. Everyone was dancing, it was pretty cool. Okay. What is your take on the, keto, the ketogenic diet? They said the ketone diet, but we'll say the ketogenic diet. Um, I'm a big fan of it if it's done correctly. If it's done in the Atkins way where you overdo the animal products like a lot of these guys do, then in the long run, I feel like it's going to be unhealthy. Um, I'm a big fan of even I'm, I'm, I'm almost like on a ketogenic diet. I don't eat much sugar. I do carrot juice when, after I run so when my body can handle it. And the only fruit I really eat lately is strawberries, sometimes papaya. It's very low glycemic. <clears throat> so I think that the ketogenic diet can be very good. Look, there's so many diets out there on the market. You sure, like such as the keto diet, the paleo diet, the South Beach diet, the microbiotics diet, the maker's diet, and the list goes on and on and on. And all the creators of these diets, they claim to get results. They say people are healing from disease, they're losing weight, and all these different things. To be honest with you, I've actually seen people heal from disease and lose weight on all these diets. And there's one common denominator on why they all succeed. And that common denominator is they all eliminate certain foods from their intake completely without any exception. The crazy thing about it all is all those diets that I just mentioned, they all eliminate the exact same foods. Any diet that works eliminates the exact same foods. So you can create any fad you want and heal people and be healthy based off of the fact of eliminating certain foods. And those foods that they eliminate are refined sugars and processed starches. Interestingly enough, these are the foods that are a no-no on the ketogenic diet. But there are starches that are healthy that are on many of these diets, such as baked potatoes, brown rice, beans, quinoa, millet, buckwheat, um, yams, brown rice, pastas, all these different things. But if you want to take it to the next level, you can eliminate that if you're not going to overdo the eggs, the animal products, and things like that. This is to help satiate you. So <clears throat> it, it's actually – I'm a big fan of the ketogenic diet. If you can – Eat appropriate amounts of the animal products without overdoing it. Bacon is a no-no. There's research that shows that they've got these like little hooks. Like it's like anyway, bacon is a no-no. Um, don't eat 14 sticks of butter. Like all these different things that they do. 
if you need the starches in order to satiate you, to have that full feeling, satiation feeling without overdoing these animal products, then you're gonna have to do that on the Cook 12 Foods diet. But I eat a 100% raw vegan diet. If someone were to want to do the best diet available, my recommendation would be 100% raw with eggs and goat's cheese. If you need more, the fish is good in salads. That right there, that boundary, like that right there is like kick ass. Like raw, 100% raw with animal products that don't hurt animals for people that are vegan. Eggs, if you get them correctly, is not gonna hurt a chicken. Goat's cheese actually sometimes keeps goats alive. Like all these different things, like be, this is a really good diet. Fish, I know you're killing fish, but you know, uh, Jesus Christ ate fish and multiplied them over many thousands of people. Anyway, so moving along. <clears throat> I do cook the eggs for the girls. Okay. What's the best advice you can give a now beginning vegan? Okay, number one is get out of the like vegan um, construct immediately. <laughs> A lot of them are like, it's almost like this fear thing, like uh, scared about like what people, what that group is gonna say if you have an egg that doesn't harm animals or anything like this. It's more about, veganism is more about anim, animal protection, animal rights, moral, moral aspects of, against animal, versus human health. So you can actually be on a vegan diet that's not healthy. Refined sugar doesn't come from animals. That's one of the most damaging foods to the human body. Processed starches, if made in a certain way, can be void of animals. So it's like, is veganism that great, really? And so what you're doing is you're taking away all the protein and fat that rebuilds the human body, such as eggs and, and, and cheese, and you're eating things like starches in high abundance that just breaks down into glucose, which is sugar and fiber. That doesn't rebuild the human body. It's like, it gives you fuel, yes. You can get fuel from other ways. But what I'm saying is we wanna nourish ourselves. That's good for satiating, but we wanna rebuild our human body. Can vegans wear makeup? Dude, I, the only reason I'm a vegan is because I'm 100% raw vegan and I'm vegan by default. It's just what it is. I'm not, I don't do it for moralistic reasons for animals, even though I love animals, I don't wanna see them harmed, I'm not into factory farming and all these things. But like I've seen many vegans attack humans in a vicious way, which is like more cruelty than they're doing, than people, than those people are doing to the animals. Okay. Can you discuss your thoughts on diabetes, CBD oil, and suggest several helpful foods? Okay, diabetes equals bad diet. Diabetes doesn't, doesn't happen to you because of genetics or because you did something wrong spiritually or something like this. Diabetes equals bad diet it, what it means is you're eating too much sugar and starch because starch breaks down into sugar so you what happens is you produce you have all the sugar your pancreas go on overdrive throwing insulin in and then your body protects you by going insulin resistant so like it stops the process but then we continue to put the sugar in and it's like saying stop it's not about what you can take to do diabetes it's about what you can eliminate from your diet to heal from diabetes there's nothing you can take to heal from diabetes you have to improve your diet. It's that simple. High blood pressure, same thing. If you have high blood pressure, it, is, it means you have, a, you have a bad diet. All of these things. I mean, there are not every disease, you know, but I'm saying like these basic ones. I've had people come to these raw food retreats. One guy was on 24 meds, had GERD, acid reflux, diabetes, healed everything in like 10 days.
All right, let's take a look here. All right. All right. So everybody, um, thank you for tuning in. Our raw food retreat in June is two thirds full. It probably won't fill up until the very last second like every other retreat. So come on out if you want, it's in June. Go to the raw food world, no, the raw food retreat.com. Our store is the raw food world.com. I do articles all the time. I just actually gave a timeline of what I used to eat for the last 20 years, like the first two years I gave everything I ate, I usually ate the same thing every day, so it's pretty easy. And then what I ate from year two to five, five to seven, all the way to 20 years. Um, but I do articles all the time. So if, if you want to join our newsletter list, go to the rawfoodworld.com, just put your email address in any of the join our newsletter list boxes. Um, I love how you keep it positive and supportive without judgment. Thanks so much, Matt. It was a delight joining you tonight. Thank you. It was a pleasure with everybody joining you guys too. I appreciate it. Um, all right. We started a few minutes early, so we're going to end a few minutes early. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Rawfoodworld.com. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Go to the Raw Food World on Instagram. Follow me. This is my unedited, my story. I do it every day. We're at 8,000 followers. Once we hit 10,000, we can actually start putting links in. So I'm trying to hit this 10,000 mark. Follow us. Um, we also are on Facebook, my story. Everything gets also imported to Facebook. And then also on YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel if you want to see our old stuff because the my story stuff only lasts for uh, 24 hours on Instagram. All right, everybody. Mwah! That was a good one.